five percent isn't that bad, and it's relatively stable. So, um, and because the other sectors of the economy, like unemployment and um, and GDP and, and GDP growth, is is, is doing uh, somewhat worse, we believe that they should focus more on, on growth instead of inflation. Um, and supplement to what he said, the reason there's a trade-off between them is because when the Fed drops its rates, it infuses the economy with more money. And as there's more money in the system, it will cause prices to generally rise, which is inflation. But it also drops the lending rate, so it, gives, it means there's more money in the bank's reserves and allows them to make more loans, which is how they plan on encouraging growth in the economy. Because people will take more loans out, they'll buy more houses, buy cars, buy something they need loans for. So that's their overall goal, and that's the reason for the trade-off, because as you increase one, they can't have both at the same time. In keeping with this, since you, you have this up here, if we were to have, and I'm inclined to agree with your assessment of this, but if, if we were to go back to, say, June, July, before oil prices came down and before we saw the worst of this financial market episode, the futures markets for oil showed oil prices trending higher a little bit. And if you look at this chart, um, the blue line, total CPI, is generally above core for a period of several years. So over time, you know, which, would, I mean, would that change your answer? Is it, is, at some point, do you have to keep an eye on overall inflation and, and not just the core? Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree that uh, inflation um, is, a, is a concern. Um, but because of the oil prices and how lately they've been dropping, we, um, that's why we decided it, it's, it's not so bad in, in the core inflation since it is so stable. Um, but I do agree because if, if you look at total inflation as far as gas prices and, and um, oil does have a major effect and, and because it's, it's so high, relatively, it's consistently high, then it does uh, affect people's budget. So, um, yeah, I do think it's an issue, but because re lately it has been dropping, then um, because of the circumstances, uh, we, we felt that it wasn't as important. Let me ask one other thing. Um, along the way, talking about consumer expenditures, uh, one of you mentioned that uh, this last quarter was the first negative quarter for consumption growth since '91. Now, between '91 and now, we've had a recession. Why didn't consumption fall in that recession? Um, well, that's essentially a question. What's different about this cycle compared to the to the last one? Well, the last recession was very brief, so it, it probably didn't have as much as, a, as much as an effect. And I don't think that consumer confidence went down as much in the last recession either. So a lot of that drop that you're seeing is due to the lack of consumer confidence. And uh, we didn't have a financial crisis like we have now that supplemented the recession back then. So that's probably another, um, another big reason why we've seen a greater decline in consumer expenditures now, even though we're not officially in a recession right now. Okay. If I may add on, sure. Um, in the last recession, uh, a lot of economists believed that as long as we kept uh, the housing market somewhat stable, um, that could hold, that would hold um, the economy, um, in, not in place, but it would, it would help it out. So when we lowered when uh, Mr. Greenspan lowered it to 1% and kept it there, that helped out the housing sector and kept it relatively stable, which helped out the economy. I'm good. You good? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys.